Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. I had a couple of ideas about what to do today, but one of the distros that I've really been waiting to review for a while is Bunsen Labs, which is an open box distro which is fast, configurable and beautiful. I've held off for a while because it was based on Debian 9, but the updated version, which is based on Debian 10, has now been released. So let's take a look. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So we're doing another open box review. Um, there are reasons for this. I, as you know, have become a firm user of uh, window managers, and my journey into window managers uh, started with open box, uh, configuring it initially on Arch and then on Debian. And I started to question why I was using a full desktop environment. Because once you get used to using a window manager and you realize it does everything that you need, well, it's hard to go back to a full desktop environment because, to be bluntly honest, I can't see the point. Um, you get lots of critics, of course. You get those who say, uh, and I get this a lot in, in my comments every time I look at a window manager, why would you bother? These days, being lightweight it, it is almost irrelevant. Most people have computers that have the resources to run a full test desktop environment without problems. And that's true enough. There are, of course, those people who still have very old machines, and lightweight distros can be a complete boon for them um, because they can bring an old laptop to life and be very functional. But actually, I don't think it's just about being lightweight. Running a window manager is a choice. And it's a choice that once you get used to it, the system that you have is almost irrelevant. You use a window manager like Openbox because you enjoy using the system. It's about personal preference. It's not necessarily about you not being able to run a full desktop environment. It's just about a choice. The other comment I get is, I would prefer the full, full functionality of a, a desktop environment. Well, actually, that, that that's a little bit of a misnomer because window managers, once you start to build them up and configure them, are just as functional as full desktop environments. Yes, you add in the individual pieces rather than starting with something that already has all the bells and whistles, but essentially a window manager, as you build it up, becomes your desktop environment, and they're no more or less functional than actually anything else. What's the other criticism I get? Yeah, um, it's too slow to work in something like a window manager. It's a different way of working. Well, those people who... who kind of put those uh, criticisms to me i'm always a little bit stunned about how i would answer them because the last thing a window manager is is slow to work in and uh, because you tend to do the work yourself to configure it well it does what you want when you want yes it tends to run off key bindings but when I've run desktop environments, especially Mate, which is my preferred when I'm running a full desktop environment, albeit that isn't very often these days, uh, you set your key bindings anyway. So a window manager does everything a desktop environment uh, does. Now, the other thing, and I suppose this is the big criticism, is, and we're back to this, most people just want to get on and do the work. And I understand that. People like me and many of you out there who would classify themselves as enthusiasts like to fiddle and build things up. Fully understand that not everybody wants to do that. 
and you don't have to. There are lots of distros out there that take window managers and pre-configure them so that they are ready to go and you don't have to do anything with them. Everything is there for you. And this is where the likes of Bunsen Labs comes in, really. I used Bunsen Labs a couple of years ago on the previous version of Debian um, for a while, and I was really impressed with it. And uh, back in the day, I ran Crunchbang for a while, which was sort of the ancestor of uh, Bunsen Labs. But I've put off doing a review of Bunsen because... It was stuck on Debian 9 for quite a long time. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I, I just thought it was worthwhile waiting till it had moved to Debian 10. Now, Debian, of course, is what it is. It is solid and stable as the day is long, but you do tend to get older packages. Nevertheless, I haven't found that to be a problem. And as you all know, I use Arch for playing, and most of the time I'm in Arch, but I do have a Debian stable system, and I use that for work. And and I use it for work because I don't want to be messing about with big updates. I do just want to get on and do what I need to do with work. In fact, it's dedicated to my, my paid work. And I found that plain Debian, plain Arch are what work for me. And... Even if I distro hop, which I think is quite unlikely uh, in this day and age, it would still be an Arch or a Debian-based distro. I'm sorry, RPM distros, as good as many of you are, Fedora, OpenSUSE, etc., etc. I've got so used to Debian and Arch that that's what I'm going to use, that they suit me. But enough of that. Let, let's move on to the split screen and have a look at Bunsen Labs web page. So you should see the combined screen there with the Bunsen Lab web pages uh, web page open. And as you can see, the latest release, which was only back in August of this year, is called Lithium. Um, and it touts itself as a distribution offering a lightweight and easily customizable open box desktop. Okay, great. So it gives you a start. It's already customized. That doesn't mean that you can't do lots of playing and customizing yourself because you can. However, you know, it you can just get on and work from the get-go. So it's pre-configured with OpenBox, Tint2, a Conky system, and it too has moved to JG menu. We've seen this quite a lot in the past, um, which gives you a more traditional menu, often on Tint2. And I haven't got a problem with that. It seems to work quite well. Let's quickly move over to the release announcement, which is on the Bunsen Labs uh, forum. Um, and what do they say? It's available in two live versions, AMD 64 or a 32-bit version. And uh, that's great. And what I was uh, impressed about here is they can also include Broadcom, excuse me, Broadcom wireless drivers, which must be one of the most annoying packages that we have. And a lot of older laptops do, a, unfortunately, tend to use a, a Broadcom chip. And uh, it's non-free, so any distribution that includes them by default is all good. Uh, so what are the major features? New dark default theme uh, featuring custom-colored papyrus icons. Okay. More modularity and flexibility. So your Bunsen Labs session can actually coexist, coexist with a default open box or XFCE session. Okay, that's nice. Um, you can replace the open box window manager if you want, but keep Bunsen Labs auto started apps, menus, and key bindings. Again, very nice. Uses JG menu by default. A new init agnostic simplified bl exit script fine improvements to what it calls the blob themes manager improvement to the welcome screen uh some default applications have been changed the installer now supports secure boot okay and a whole range of other small tweaks and bits and pieces 
If you go to the installation page, you can download the 64-bit ISO or the 32-bit ISO, either directly or by torrent. I downloaded a torrent, and this is where it tells you the system requirements, and it says it will run on greater than one gig of RAM, both systems, but it recommends greater than or equal to two gig of RAM and a 20 gig hard drive. So, okay, rather than giving my standard VirtualBox uh, uh, setup eight gig of RAM this time, I'm going to bring it down to see how it copes. We then have instructions for installing from a live ISO, verifying it, etc., etc. So, enough messing about. Let's go, let's fire it up and uh, see what it offers. So let's get on to installing Bunsen Labs. I've literally just downloaded the ISO over a torrent before firing up OBS. So I haven't looked at this uh, before. What I do know is that the live ISO can be launched in live mode or you can install it direct from the grub menu. My understanding is that if you launch it into live mode, there won't be an installer on the desktop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select install once we've launched it, go through the process, and then we'll reboot into the install system. Now, I've done something a little bit different this week. Um, because it claims that um, it's great for hardware that runs on RAM of greater than or equal to 2 meg i've just set the virtual machine to 3 sorry 2 2 gig of ram 2 meg would be a bit of a stretch for any uh, system i've set the uh, the virtual box uh, system to 3 gig of ram which i think should pretty much suit most people but anyway let's just get on with it let me launch it and i will go to full screen and right, that's not a good first start. So let's cancel that and close it. And let's try again. Okay, start. Right, that seems to have worked this time. I don't know what happened there. You obviously haven't got the, uh, um, the correct resolution. I'm just wondering on the advanced options whether or not we have that. Uh, expert installer GUI, expert installer text, rescue mode GUI. Let's just go back to the main menu. Right, guys, looks like we're going to have to just do a standard install. So let's hit return and uh, see what it brings up. And um, we seem to be mounting. Not sure what that initial error was, but I'm sure it's something specific to VirtualBox as it seems to have booted fine. Okay, so it looks like we've got the standard Debian installer here. So I'm just going to continue. Uh, United Kingdom, continue. British English, continue. It's detecting and mounting the ISO. By the way, I might not, might not uh, record going through this whole process. I'm just going to look at this Debian installer as we go through. To be honest, it's a bit of a nice change from the likes of Calamaris. Uh, the Debian, install, Debian installer works fine. It's just a little bit different. It's a shame we haven't got the full resolution, but hey-ho, we'll see how this works out and see, see what happens as we go along. Right, it's configuring the network, which should be fine. It does take its time, the Debian installer. I've found it doesn't tend to be quite as fast as Calamaris, but hey-ho. Please enter the host name for the system. We are just going to go with the default, but if I was doing this for real, I would probably uh, play around and put my own custom name in. Uh, domain name, it's down as home. Fine, let's just keep that as it is. A user account will be created for you instead of the root account. Okay, fine. Uh, OTB. Let's move on. Select a username for the new account, OTB, and choose a password. Right, so you can show the password if you want. All good. Continue. Configure the clock. It's just gone past. Detect disks and partition disks. 
I'm just going to go for the automatic option uh, or whatever it offers. So what have we got? Guided use entire disk. Let's go with that. Let's continue. All files in one partition recommended for new users. Do you know, there are arguments for setting up a separate home partition and a separate VAR partition, etc., etc. I'll be honest, I've never used them. I back up all my doc files to GitLab and all the packages that I install, I, I, I create a package list for reinstallation. And as far as actual documents are concerned, I tend to save a backup, a backup of them on uh, a USB stick or a USB drive. So I'm not going to bother with a separate uh, home partition. Let's just hit continue. And what's it suggesting? 31.1 gigs as EXT4. And it's going to create a swap partition of 3.2 gigs which is broadly similar to uh, the RAM that I've set up. Okay, go for it. Write the changes to disk. Yes, please. It's partitioning the disks now, and it's getting on to installing the system. So what I'll do is I'll pause this here, and we'll come back once it requires some interaction from me. Right, so uh, we're all done. By my watch, that's taken about six minutes. So although the installer looks different, really, you don't need to worry about it. It's straightforward. And after the initial interaction where I entered my username, etc., etc., no further interaction was required. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut this down I'm going to remove the ISO. I'm going to have a quick look at it, a bit of a play to see what we've got, and then we'll come back and I'll take you through the install system. Well, I've just rebooted and uh, I haven't had a play yet, but I thought I would record this because as soon as I rebooted, I get this little uh, hello welcome screen. Uh, I should say that the resolution wasn't correct when I rebooted, but it has AR and R installed, and I simply open that and uh, change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. But I get this welcome screen here, you know, hi OTB and welcome to Bunsen Labs. This is an optional post installation script designed to help you configure your new Linux installation and get the most out of it. Okay, I'm going to need my password. I'm going to need an internet connection. Um. Right, do I want to run it? Well, why not? Let's hit enter. Let me just get the focus. Password. All good. So this is a, a message about uh, FOSS, free and open source software. Certain choices are known to carry an increased risk of breaking things. Two of the riskier things are adding Ubuntu PPAs. Well, we're not going to do that on a Debian-based system. Or unknown, untrusted apps. Okay. Or installing a package that requires a newer version of libc. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, look, I understand. Oh, type, I understand. Right. Okay. Before we continue, we need to make sure your system software is up to date. Would you like to upgrade? Yes, I would. This is very nice. Um, yes, it's minimal, but there's not that many updates required. So I think this is a really nice touch just to make sure that you're completely up to date. And we'll let it get on with that. Okay, so... We're now getting the notice that the package Bunsen Welcome has been upgraded. The script might have changed, so it'll be restarted. Hit enter to continue. And OK, hit enter to continue again. And it's going to run through just to make sure what's happening here. I already have a PAY kernel installed. Would I not like to enable the Debian backports repositories? Um, I'm going to say no to this for now, but it's nice to be asked. Would I like to enable the Bunsen Labs backport repositories? I'm going to say no. 
Would you like to install Bluetooth support? No, not at the moment, thanks. What about Java support? Well, again, I'll go for no. Would I like to install a Flash browser pr plugin? No, thank you. Would you like to install Dropbox? No. But again, nice to be asked. Would you like to view these options and screens again? Um, the remaining screens will offer you the chance to install less commonly used packages used for developing software. Would you like to view these options? Well, I'll tell you what, let's just see what it was going to offer. Would you like to install some commonly used version control tools? Well, I'll hit no for that. A lamp stack? No, thank you. Debian packaging tools? No, thank you. Hit any key to exit. What a great little tool. Well, first impressions, I'm really impressed. So I'll go back to where I was after the installation. I'll have a little bit of a play and we'll come back and we'll go through the desktop. Right, so uh, I've rebooted. I've had a little bit of a play, found my way around the system and uh, I'm quite impressed, let me say that from the, the, the get-go. I've just rebooted again from scratch, and what you see in front of you is uh, LightDM, uh, the login screen, in its default configuration. Um, you'll either love it or you'll hate it. Um, it's quite distinct, it's quite a dark look to it, I like that. I find it very easy on the eyes, and perhaps my old eyes are, are part of the issue for that. But uh, you'll either love it or hate it, but don't forget that the theming can always be changed. This is just the default. Initially, when I rebooted after installation, I still had the, the low resolution, but once I, I'd set that through AR&R, uh, or a a x Randa, a r and r no a r and r is what it's called um it seems to have remembered it so that's all good uh you can always set your resolution anyway uh by a little script in uh light dm um but i've done that plenty of times before so let's just log in and see what we get well there's our default wallpaper and i have to say i quite like the look the coloring of this it's very very easy on the eyes and immediately you see a little conky over to the right with all the pre-configured shortcut keys so i'm just looking there alt f2 runs uh, a run dialogue apparently yeah there it is uh alt f3 Ah, right, okay. Uh, so that seems to bring up uh, D menu, which, which is always good. Uh, the super key brings up the menu, the standard open box menu. Uh, super tab. Hmm, okay. Right, okay, so that allows us to go to different desktops. That's good. Uh, super T, the terminal. There we go. So let me just shut that down. And Super W is a web browser, which is Firefox, as you can see. So all those seem to work really well. I wonder what it, what it uses as its default editor. It looks like Genie. Indeed it is. Okay, so let me shut that down. You can go through all the rest of these screens as you wish. Now, initially... What has been added is the JG menu here. So you can either right click on the desktop to get your menu in the traditional open box style, or, and this is tint two on the bottom, uh, you can simply launch it as a standard um, menu. And I personally like the way it's themed. You'll see over at the far right, you have a lockdown shutdown button, your time, uh, a link to volume. I've actually got the uh, sound disabled on this, so I'm not going to play around with that. Um, what else? You've got network manager. Don't know what that is. 
presentation mode and power manager settings. So let's have a look at the power manager settings. Right, okay, so it links in the XFCE power manager, which you're particularly going to need for laptops more than anything else. I'm not sure what that is. Um, offline mode, manage history, preferences. Let's see what preferences are. Oh, it's a clipboard manager by the look of it. Okay, whatever. It's nice. I'm just looking here at the RAM on the Conkey, 367 megs, which is fine. It, it's pretty lightweight. You can see I've only got 3 gig of RAM here. Um, more than enough for this system by the feel of it. I've been playing around, opening things up and shutting them down, and it feels really snappy. I don't necessarily see open box distros or lightweight window manager distros, as I've said at the beginning, as specifically for old hardware. I think they're very functional for anybody, but it's nice to see that it is really lightweight. So if you have an old machine, this could reactivate it. Let's have a look at what it's actually got. So... We've got links here to our terminal, our web browser, our file manager, which I believe is Thunar. Yes, it is. Okay. And and don't forget that the choices Bunsen Labs have made can all be changed and different things are, are used. Text editor we already know is Genie. The media player. What is the media player? That's VLC. I know some people don't like VLC, but I I, I must admit that I tend to install it as one of my go-tos. We then have the applications menu where we have uh, a load of accessories. BL or Bunsen Labs CLI editor. Let's just see what that is. That would seem to be Nano. Okay. So these are standard sort of applications. BL file manager. Again, I'm assuming Thunar, yeah, they're just a different name for some of the things that we've already looked at. What else have we got in uh, accessories? Compton, obviously, Galculator, GTK Hash, LibreOffice. Let's just open that up. Okay. I notice this is a cut-down version of LibreOffice. It's got uh, Writer and Calc. You may want things like presentation or math, but they're, they're an apt install away. I think it's quite a sensible uh, choice to make to install part of LibreOffice. Uh, what else is here? Uh, nitrogen for wallpaper, which I would expect. So we're obviously on this uh, BL lithi Lithium. Okay, there's not a massive amount of wallpaper there, but easy enough to change it. Actually, that's quite nice. I wasn't expecting to like that, but I quite like the look of that. What about that? Mm, little bit too plain for me. Hmm. Do you know, I think I'm going to stick with uh, the standard one. BL Networks Pink? Always work. Oh, that's, that's quite bright. But anyway, so nitrogen is for your uh, wallpaper. Uh, what else have we got there? Anything I need to see? Screenshot. And that would be, hmm, not quite sure, actually. Help about. Let's have a look at help. Do I want to read the online manual? Yeah, go on then. I'll read the online manual. It's the XFC4 screen shooter. I wasn't sure whether or not it was Scrot, but no, it isn't apparently. So uh, lots of things to explore there. The terminal emulator, uh, the file manager, Vim. Hmm. Nothing's happening when I click on Vim. Maybe it isn't installed. Oops. Let's just try that again. Accessories, Vim. Let us do a sudo apt install Vim. 
One of the things, of course, with uh, open box is you have a standard menu when you install open box plain and vanilla, which won't necessarily relate to the programs that you have installed, and that might be a little bit of a leftover. Let's just, uh, now I've installed it, see if it works. Accessories, Vim. There you go. It works. So it just needed installing. That was all, and it was simple enough. Uh, so that's accessories. What about development? Well, you've got Genie, an icon browser, image viewer, which I presume is going to be Ristretto. Yes, it is. It's Ristretto. What else have we got? Um... We haven't got the GIMP, but you can obviously install that if you want. Multimedia, like Pulse Audio Mixer, VLC, XF Burn. And in Internet, we've got Firefox by default, uh, Transmission. The web browser links all go to Firefox. So I think they are, again, a leftover of uh, the standard open box configuration. It's only lightly themed, really, this menu, which I haven't got too much of a problem with. We've got FileZilla. Excellent. That's always a must-have for me. Uh, some people don't like it. Uh, I, I, I think it's one of the, the best programs that we've got. Um, LibreOffice, okay, yeah, Calc and Writer. And then a whole range of settings. So your advanced network configuration, I would assume here, goes straight through to Network Manager. Yes, it does. Applications, let's have a look. AR&R, which I use to set the resolution. Uh, customize look and feel. You can set your alternatives there. Right, I think this is... Um, LX appearance by the look of it and we have our standard look and feel so lithium is standard right I'd wait a dark Bunsen black blunt Bunsen HE so for those of you who like a, a lighter theme Bunsen HE flattish crocus remix rainforest uh, I think not. Uh, Yeti. Do you know, I'm just going to go back up here and uh, stick with the lithium. I quite like the lithium theme. And, of course, you can install other themes. That's not a problem. So, uh, yeah, all good. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Customise look and feel. Oh, sorry. I've already done that. So we'll go back. Settings. The open box configuration manager. Okay. And you can install your new themes from here and tinker with them to your heart's content, which is nice. I don't know why I keep going to the menu at the bottom left because I really don't need it. <laughs> I can just right click anywhere. Uh, removable drives and media, preferred applications, synaptic package manager, which is always great, and the panel manager, which is going to be for our Tint 2. So let's just have a quick look at this as it uh, launches. So geometry, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to stick it to the top. Apply. And it's as simple as that. You can do all sorts with Tint 2. I'm not going to go through that in detail, but I would personally prefer my panel to be at the top. Neither here nor there, really. What have we got in system? Uh, GDB package installer, GM run, Gigolo. I'm not sure what that is. Let's just open it up and have a look. Bookmarks manager, is it about? Oh, no, a simple front end to connect or mount to local and remote file systems. Okay, that's nice. What else? Uh, Gparted, HTOP, 458. Okay, so the conkey here is mirroring that. 
the RAM usage is going to go up when I'm doing something like this and I'm uh, opening and closing applications all the time. LX Terminal, right, is that what they're using? The LX Terminal, let's just have a look. Yes, it is. It's the LX Terminal. Again, you can install any terminal that you want. Ah, Tint2 X Terminal uh, Emulator. BL Utilities, okay, they have got Screen Shooter there already with some nice options there. Do it in five seconds. In 10 seconds, select an area. Okay, or upload a, a screenshot to uh, IMGUR. SSH, install the open SSH server or install, install a, a VNC viewer or a VNC server. And the Blob Themes Manager. Let's have a look at this. Save or restore settings for any of these. Let's have a look at uh, what we've got in the saved. Right, okay. So it looks like we can switch between different themes here. So you've got plenty of options here. Uh, places. Okay, browse here, browse in uh, downloads. Let's just go there. Yeah, opens up Thuna, which is nice. Um, recent files. Auto start. Yeah, I was looking at the auto start file just to see what it, what it uses. And I quite like the way that uh, Bunsen Labs formats all of its text files so we've got what do we want to start here uh your bind keys uh where are we let's go down to something uh, else that we're going to use all the time right nitrogen okay all good the compositor compton it's starting up it's starting the tint two session and it's starting conky and for those open uh, box fans amongst you you will know that this is a great way to, to actually uh, configure what you want to start up. So PN Mixer, Clip It, which are uh, actually up here. Thunar in Demon Mode. Great. So when you log into the session, this auto start script just automatically runs every time you do it. Okay, great. That's nice and easy. It's got so many uh, um, routes or roads to different things. I mean, if I go down to the preferences, edit auto start, right, that's where it is initially. Edit your RC XML file. Right, so you can do all of that. And you may want to look at this, but I, I actually think the defaults are pretty good. Uh, JG menu, which is what all of these open box distros seem to be using at the moment. Your key bindings. Okay, so you can edit your key bindings in a file. And again, it's really nicely formatted. Very easy. If you don't want to launch the BL file manager or Thunar when you, you hit mod or super plus F, install another file manager. It's completely up to you. This is just to get you going. Um, what else? Appearance. Well, Conkey, Tint2, the compositor. What does it have in appearance? Okay, it launches uh, LX appearance for us again. Oops, here we go. And wallpaper, power management, D menu, GM run, the display. Okay, and system, printers. Okay, so you can install printing support, which is great. HTOP, install selected packages. So install Chromium. I tell you what, let, let's just see how it does this. I'm going to click on install Pro Chromium. Run the installer now. Yes, please. Enter my password. This is incredibly user-friendly. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Download it, and, and it's getting on with it, and uh, I assume I'll see Chromium here in a second once it's installed. The internet connection uh, here 
is better than normal. So I think I would probably play with uh, the mirrors that this is using to try and speed things up a little bit. But it, it, it it's absolutely fine as it is. So it's processing. Hit any key to exit. So now I'm hoping that this is going to have updated itself. And there it is, Chromium Web Browser. And as you can see, it's really quite snappy for three gig of RAM. So yeah, you've got all your normal things there. G parted, set default browser, edit Debian alternatives, about Bunsen alternatives, and then a link to all sorts of different resources. Right. That's as far as I'm going to do go on this review. Uh, I really like this. I think this is a great system that adds a lot of user friendliness to Openbox, but still stays quite close to the roots of what Openbox really looks like if you install a vanilla version and then start tweaking it. It's just done the donkey work for you. Let's go and have a chat. So that's Bunsen Labs. Um, I'm really impressed. I love it. I would recommend it, and I don't say that about many distros. So if you're interested in looking at an open box distro, I would highly recommend you download this, give it a spin, see what you think. And from me, there can't be higher praise. Really like it. Even the color theme appeals to me. So I can't really say anything else about it. Uh, go out, get it, give it a go. What else would I say? Um, well, let's move on. Um, it's been a busy week for me. I have been ordering lots of stuff uh, for the cabin. I've got the internet connection sorted now uh, in there with uh, a 4G router and an antenna, which seems to be working well. I need to get in some furniture, which is ordered and in the process of arriving day by day. I need to thank my Patreons uh, because the money that's coming from that has purchased things like a table for the computer and um, a new audio interface, etc., etc. Because I'm going to still have both rooms set up and I'll probably swap and change between them. And initially, I'm probably going to use one of my laptops down there. So I've spent the week... Um, configuring my x260 an old x260 thinkpad and getting it exactly the same as my main workstation here i'll probably do a little bit of a, a how to how i've done that uh, in a future video but we'll get to that um so it shouldn't be too long before i can give you a show round of the, the new cabin we're almost there i've almost got the bits and pieces so pending that uh, I'd just like to say, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please join me on library as well. Um, please like and subscribe. Don't forget that I now do have a Patreon account. So if you'd like to support the channel, please go to patreon.com forward slash old tech bloke. And with that in mind, I would very much like to say thank you to my existing Patreons, Corbinian Shilderman, Robert Boudreau, Gary Moore, Aristoteles, Papa Giorgio, Stormpix, Stephen Cross, Mike Long, David Bird, Entropy UK, Richard Wade, Tiger, Philip Espy, Forrest Rhodes and Scott Russell. Thank you very much guys for supporting the channel and thank you very much for your contributions which are allowing me to get a bit more kit and get things sorted. So other than that, have a great weekend and uh, I'll see you next week.